I think it's not important for you to think about how to get people to engage with you. My biggest tip is how can you engage with people? Unusual marketing strategies you probably never heard of. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Jade and today you're watching a video where I answer your deepest, darkest questions about social media, Instagram, YouTube, marketing. Let's get into it. Basically, I've been seeing a trend online where people eat food in front of the camera. Now, I know people get really uncomfortable when I do that on my channel. They're like, Jade, why is this my content? Well, listen, Sarah, okay? I am bored of watching the same old tips and tricks about how to grow my Instagram. So that's why I thought, why not combine my two favorite things in the world, marketing strategies and cooking to make a cooking with Jade. Cue the intro. Welcome to cooking with Jade. While we talk about some serious topics. All right, guys. Buckle up, grab a snack. Oh wait, you could cook with me because today on the menu, we have shamrock shake, healthy version. I know St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So I thought, why not make a green healthy smoothie? Okay, I've been really into cooking. You guys saw my last episode and I literally almost burnt the kitchen. So it's gonna be a really good fiesta. We're not only gonna make something tasty, we're also gonna taste test it. I have my mom with me that's gonna maybe tell us if it's okay, if I don't poison her. And we're also just gonna answer your questions, call you guys up and do this at the same time. All right, grab a snack, grab a beverage, and let's get started. Hi, you're on the Ask Jade Show. Oh, hi, Jade. One second, I'm in the quiet part of the library. Okay. The loud part of the library. Okay, go to the loud part. Okay, yay, hello. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? So my name is B. I'm from LA, but I currently go to Boston University. What's up, B? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. What's your question? How can I help you? Okay, so basically, um, I obviously, just like everybody else who watches you, am building my Instagram because when I graduate, I want to focus on my YouTube channel. So meanwhile, you know, I want to grow this thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking at my insights and I see that like a lot of people who follow me are not necessarily like the target age group that I want to target. Oh. Um, I think the reason why that is is because like I actually like I like pay someone to like help me like engage and interact with followers. Because, is it? Like, oh, oh, I don't have. Oh, who, yeah, you pay an agency. Good. Um, so she's like an influencer herself, but like she does this like as her daytime job. Okay, got you. Yeah, I mean you can look her up if you want. Her name is Ben. What's her name? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> no worries. So you hire someone to help you um, along, and yeah, what's what's going on? So like, I kind of want to target more like sixteen to twenty-six year olds because like, whenever I do post something, like those are the people that are consistently commenting because like right. you know that's who I relate to, and like I just don't feel like the thirty-year-old that she's like reaching out to is like really helping me at all. Mm. So I just wanted to know how on my own I would be able to reach out to a more like a target age group that I would want to reach out to. Okay, so how to reach 16 and 26 year olds and just kind of reach a specific target group. Uh, you know, what's holding you back? Like, I feel like you know how to make the content. So, you know, what's the one thing you feel like you're missing? There's one thing putting content out. There's another thing marketing yourself and just putting yourself out there and getting those followers. Right. And that's the part that I'm, that's like really hard for me. Like, let's, let's go from the top. You make relatable content for a younger audience. Have you ever thought that a 16 or 26 year old maybe made their Facebook account in 2010 when they were 13 lying that they're 20s? What I've had a lot of times is a lot of people forget to consider that on Facebook, I'm technically 27. Like I'm technically 50 years old when I'm supposed to be 17, right? Maybe, do you think maybe some of your audience is like lying their age or you feel like you're still not getting the right enough target demographic? I don't know. Like I do, I do see the people that follow me sometimes and it's like mom blogs and I'm like, oh. I'm Okay, okay, so I don't need mom blogs. You don't want mom blogs, Scotty. You want Jessica that goes to high school or college. Exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want you to know, let's go back from the top. We're both like, you know, Gen Z or millennials. So like how do you find your favorite influencers? Where do you go to find them? I love, you know, looking up like Korean fashion, Korean beauty, things like that. So I'll look up hashtags. So you like skincare. Why is that? Did you have bad skin recently or um, super hormonal things? No. Like, I have a blog, sometimes I, like, do stuff on there. So, let's go back. So, someone who's younger maybe needs to find skincare tips, so you go on hashtags. Do you go on YouTube as well or no? Yeah, no, for sure. Of course I go Okay. <laughs> I hate to call myself Gen Z, but people who are Gen Z, they don't, they hate being yeah. bombarded with ads. Like, you can't like their photo and they, like, come back because Gen Z hates it when you, like, 
just kind of go up to them, right? They're like, they cringe if you like for like or follow right. for follow. So off the bat, you know, know that doesn't terrible. work. I hate it. Right. People, it doesn't work like that. The only way you said to get someone like us to care is if we manually search it. So are you making manually searchable content? Look, can you give me an example of something that's like, a searchable piece of content in terms of like fashion. So for example, what, what I would do, if you want to make searchable content, what I would do is kind of use keywords that are popular. So if it's Seoul Korean fashion, that's possible. Use that in the title um, and then make a p- okay. video around it. I don't know if you realize, but photos aren't where Gen Z kind of migrate towards. What I would say is people can discover you for your videos or helpful content, and then they like you for your selfies and content. Are you primarily posting okay. co- selfies? I'm not primarily posting selfies. I do a lot of just random lifestyle so it's one day it's like a street style photo another it's like actual street photography got it got it yeah Which so might also be the problem. right so that's the thing gen z just like doesn't give a shit and they move so fast when we scroll i can't i hate referring right. to myself to gen z but you know what i mean but uh, it's like <laughs> i feel so old but i'm like literally that so yeah i mean maybe be maybe this is what i recommend if you are ever confused yeah. on how to read your reach your 16 to 26 year old audience, all you have to do is Uh realize that we fucking hate getting bombarded. So the only way is to make searchable content. And how do you do that? Pick a keyword, use Uber suggest and play around with making videos, less pictures for the initial discovery. And then maybe they can fall in love with you after. I don't really want to focus on my YouTube channel right now because I can't, but let's say just for Instagram. Um, You know, I feel like I'm slightly all over the place. Like I've chosen like music, travel, and fashion, but is that too much? Should I just focus on fashion or just, is that okay, let's say for an Instagram for now to just be all over the place a little bit? Uh, Let's go back to your goal. You want to attract more Gen Z. So do you care if your favorite influencer talks about too many things? Oh, it's actually too, you know what? Like I don't, I don't necessarily like it when they're too random. Like I like it when they stick to like, like two or three variety, like a variety of two or three and like that's it. Okay, there you go. So you can only do what you just said right there because I think empathy is okay. super important. The, the answer is I don't know. I'm not really a genie. The best thing is to start with one. You can always add on. That's what I would recommend. Okay. All, All right. right. All right, I'm B. Do that. Thanks so much for being on the show. I love you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. All right, guys, that was really fun. B, you're so sweet. Um, I don't know if you guys saw what I was just doing. We're making a, <laughs> making a smoothie. I put in here ice, frozen banana, avocado, and spinach and mint. Mom, you think it's gonna look good? It, it looks appetizing. I don't have enough milk. So let's see if we have enough milk. Um, by the way, guys, if you're so far enjoying this video, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe and comment below what recipe I should make next. This is way too boring and healthy. Maybe we should spice it up a bit. And by liking this video, you let me know that you like it because if you don't fucking like it, I'm not gonna make it because as you guys know, empathy is super important. Oh shit, there's still a banana inside. Let's give a taste test. There's literally still a banana inside. Ooh, look how creamy she is. So we have our smoothie. I like to top it off with some cacao nibs and then we're gonna go to the next phone call. Cacao nibs are super high in antioxidants and it tastes like chocolate. So so I'm gonna be sipping this throughout the video and then my mom's gonna try at the very end. So do not miss anything. All right, call number two. Hello? Hello? Hi, you're on the Ask Jade show. Oh my God, oh my God. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Shivali and uh, I'm from India. Oh my gosh, Shivali, that's a beautiful name. But the thing is that people over here, especially where I live, I feel that people don't motivate you enough Like whenever I put up posts. They don't like to see you grow and they don't like and comment your posts. Oh. So I feel that, that, you know, that they don't put that extra effort in just giving a double tap and you feel like no one's engaging with you because maybe in India it's just not they don't want to support as much your content how to get people to engage when people don't right yes. so here's exactly. the thing I think there's a few flaws why do you think that why should people care to give a comment like why is it so important because think about it like this there's so many people I'm following you're following probably a lot of people on Instagram when you comment on someone like mm-hmm. when you personally comment on someone's picture why do you comment uh, I find it interesting and I find it uh, relatable to me. Okay, so let's go from there. You comment because it's relatable to you. So I feel that I do everything right. I do post my pictures as well. Like I get likes, but uh, not as much. And I don't get comments from people I don't know. I want to engage with them and build a relation with them. Build a new relation with them. I think it's not important. 
for you to think about how to get people to engage with you. My biggest tip is how can you engage with people? Huh. How can you be the one that's going out there? Because here's the truth. Have you tried to comment on other people's photos that like your photos? Like when your followers kind of like engage or like a photo, you kind of DM them and say, hey, thanks so much for liking. Like, are you being the ones that are engaging with them rather than expecting for them to engage with you? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Even especially after I saw your videos, I had it back in my mind that I have to engage with everyone. So even if I get to just one single comment, I always... No, 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 no. You said you get likes, but you don't get comments. So have you DM the people who liked your photo? Thanks so much for liking my photo. If there's anything I can do to make better content, let me know. Oh, that's a nice idea. All right. Try it out. <laughs> I just think that why why should people care about honestly? Sometimes I feel like I have a big stick up my butt and I'm thinking the, I'm the best when really people are busy and I just want to say, hey, you don't have to comment because my personal thoughts are why don't you reach out to them and if they kind of come back to you, then you can see them comment more frequently. Try that. Try it out. Yeah, that's, that's a really nice idea. That's a simple and nice idea. All right. Try it out. Do you have me if it works? And I hope you have a great day. As you guys might know, I'm so obsessed with my data. Like to the point where I announce it every time I wake up, like Shivali did. I love you, Shivali. My problem is when you think people don't engage with you. Don't be in that mindset. Engage with people first and then they'll come to you. Why should people give a shit when they're so busy? And second, I just feel like we're moving away from a connected economy. And what does that mean? So I'll maybe make a whole video about this if you're more and more interested. A comment is such a one-way interaction, right? Like when you comment someone's photo, it's like you don't really get that love or that kind of communication back. What I think we're now migrating towards is instead of being connected or followed, we're gonna have more conversations. So DMs, you know, literally phone calling your followers like this, it's gonna give you so much more of that engagement. I think so much of our corruption in our minds are thinking that engagement or comments. It's not. Comments are literally just a one-way wall and it's just boosting your ego at that point, right? If you truly want to build an account that inspires and influences people, you would go out there and have that conversation. You would have that two-way relationship. Think about that and marinate. All right, guys, we have one more caller. My mom is going to try my drink. Try it, mom. And let me know how you feel. It's good. Oh, you like it? Yeah. Okay, you can have it. I love you, mom. <laughs> Some of you guys might know, but I'm currently visiting home. Um, I go back and forth from LA to Portland, Oregon. Let me know if you guys are in Portland or LA. I'll probably do more meetups in the future. But I love talking to you guys. Um, I'm, I'm thinking to really settle down in LA sometime this year. I go back and forth because I'm 17 years old. So like, I <laughs> how do I say it without being like a little bitch? I'm still <laughs> reliant on some things for my parents, like car problems or insurance. So when I turn 18, you guys, when I turn 18, we're gonna celebrate. I finally can book an apartment or book a hotel. I can drive a car. I can get my license. Like <laughs> there's so many things I'm so excited for. We're going to have a big party, you guys. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but you're invited. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna be invited. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go to the third caller, wrap up this episode of Cooking with Jade, and make sure you stay to the very end because I have a feeling that this is gonna be Really good. Um, what are some other efficient ways to get promotion and build an audience on Instagram in the current atmosphere? All right, so we just talked about paid. Let's talk about free options. Um, uh -huh. If you want to get free options, what I would do is build an audience journey. So kind of start from the top. Like when you personally find your favorite artist, how do you discover your favorite artist? Like where did you find your favorite musician? Spotify playlist. Okay, perfect. So there you go. Uh, there's no way I'm an artist. If you want more artist tips, I have a friend named Edgar Sandoval Jr. He has a YouTube channel. I'll link it below, guys, if you're watching. But I know that when he was telling me when he got on Distributed, like uh, when he got on Discover Weekly, or it's all like algorithmic based. So regardless, you're going to have to cold email, it sounds like to me. Okay. Awesome. And then you, you told me that when you find them on Spotify, then you kind of look them on Instagram. Is that the way it goes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said about a brand journey. Yeah. Said, Yes, so the brand journey is what you just said. It's having the awareness, converting them to the middle of the funnel, which is your Instagram, and then converting them down even more. And kind of being mindful of, of keeping one strategy at a time. So when I say brand journey, I mean like literally building out a roadmap. Uh, what I would do is literally fake, okay, go on like Apple screen recording or like just go on your phone and just try to like mimic how people 
discover you. So pretend like you're like your fan and you're on Spotify, you find them, then you click on their bio for their Instagram because you love them so much and then you're scrolling, what do you look for? So when you're building your brand journey, it's just keeping in mind there's like typically three touch points when people discover you, awareness, consideration, and conversion. So kind of recreating that for your own brand is super crucial to kind of keep in mind what your goal is for marketing. Okay, and do you think that that requires, you know, like, profile optimization and everything? Because I'm not sure if, like, if you had any tips that you could give me if mine looks fine, if mine is actually built for that. When you're building out your audience journey map, if I were someone who was on Spotify trying to find you, I would want to see more photos of yourself because I have that connection already. Now, if your audience journey map is a shout out, then I want to see more of that cover. So you have to be very careful because the answer is not what I think, it's what your audience thinks when they're going on the page. What are they looking for? Okay. Typically people who find you on a playlist, they want to see who is, who are you? Like they don't see the face, right? You're only listening to the voice. So maybe they want to see more of your personality and stories. However, if you're doing the shout out route, what I would say is like, I want more of that cover I just signed up for because you're good. So I would say, here's the thing. There's so many things you can do. What I would do is for one month at a time, you pick one audience roadmap and then you A-B test what gets the best results. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I can see how that works. Yeah, the audience will always be right. Audience always wins, bro. All right, Amir, thanks so much for calling in. I hope this yeah, was helpful. Thank you. Yeah, you're the best. Awesome, Norman Nature! All right, guys, so thanks so much for watching today's episode. We had a little technical difficulties. I'm really sorry. If you want to be the next Ask Street Show, all you got to do is comment below, and I have sign-ups in the description box. So shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below. Um, and let me know what I should cook next. Actually, please let me know what I should cook next because as you can see, I would give it five out of 10 stars. What would you give it, mom? Five? Five out of 10 stars? That's what I bought at Freshie. Okay, so we're not doing so well. I'll see you guys on episode two for Cooking with Jade. And thanks so much for watching. I love you guys so much and peace.